When you learnt integration from first principles, Year 11's doing specialist maths, I'm sorry, you haven't learnt it yet. You learnt integration and you learnt to approximate it using either rectangles, maximum rectangle, minimum rectangle, early rectangle, late rectangle, um, things like that, or the trapezoidal rule where you turned each of these pieces into a trapezium. There is actually a better way, a more accurate method, and this is actually the method your graphics calculator uses to work out integration. So what we do is we take our curve and we approximate it by a series of parabolas. We approximate each section, three points, with a, with a parabola. Now because each of those um, sections is actually three points, I need to break it up into an even number of pieces. So it's always six, eight, ten. Okay, always even. And then what we're going to do is approximate those three points with a parabola. Now, if I have a parabola to go between them, then I can easily work out this area, and it turns out to be this rule. Now, like the textbook here, I'm not going to try to prove this for you. I'm going to leave the proof of this for you. Okay? We're just going to assume that this is true. So this is your rule for working out the area of each, sub, each pair of sections in Simpson's rule. So the integral of f x from a to b is going to be broken up into sections x0 to x2, x2 to x4, x4 to x6, all the way up to xn. And each of those, remember, turns into one of these substitutions. A third, w on 3 times w is the width of the section. A third of the width times 1 plus 4 plus 1 plus the next plus the next and so on. But notice each time there's two f of x2s. There's two f of x4s and so on. So you end up with 1. 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, little 4, plus 1 on the end. And it will always work out neatly with a 4 and then a 1, because again, we're always using an even number of, of points to break it up into. Sorry, it's actually an odd number of points, an even number of sections. We can write that again if we want to, a little bit neater like this. This is Simpson's rule, this is what your calculator is doing. So it says it's approximately w on 3, because that was in front of every term, times f of xi times mi, where this number is 1 for the first or last term, 2 for the even terms in between, and 4 for the odd number terms in between. That seems a bit complicated, doesn't it? In practice, if you have to work it out by hand, we'll be giving you a relatively small number of sections. And you will be doing this approximately using technology. Let's see if we can make this clearer with an example. Use Simpson's rule with n equals 6 subintervals, notice it's an even number, to approximate this integral. And that said three decimal places, please. So we'll work intermediate to 4. So my function is 1 over x. The width of each section is the whole width of the section I want to look at, 2.2 minus 1, divided into 6 subintervals. So that's my width. Now the table, sorry, the textbook suggests using a table, and I agree, it's a very neat way to do it. So you build a table and you go. Um, we're going from 1 up to 2.2 in steps of w, which is 0.2. So, um, f of x at each of those points, m becomes that fancy rule. Do you have to work each of these out by hand? Well, you can. You could put f of x, e f of x equals whatever in your calculator. In this case, it's a pretty simple function, right? 1 over x. You could, if you wanted, put this into a table in your graphics calculator and then give it a formula for working this out. 
In fact, if you're really clever, you can even make a formula for working out the sum we have to do next. I'll leave that to you. So, here's my values, here's my f of x's, and I'm adding them up like this. Width on 3. Now the first one is 1 times 1. The next one is 0.8333 times 4. The next one is this times this, this times this. We just add them all up. And that is Simpson's rule for the uh, approximation of the definite integral. At the end, round off to the required number of decimal places.